Big picture time, kids. When you hear me say the phrase, all one, what does that mean to you? What kind of visual images do you create in your mind when I say that we are all one? Many people have heard this phrase, but uh, they really have no concept of how big the idea really is. How awesome the truth of it really is. In my career, I have led past life hypnosis sessions for countless clients. And uh, through these experiences, I've learned that every one of us has been a man. Every one of us has been a woman. We have all been black. We have all been white. We have all been members of indigenous cultures of some faraway land. We all chose to be born into families, to have parents, spouses, and children complete, fully formed lives as all of these different people. We've all been poor. We've all been rich. We've all been royalty. So in this lifetime right now, you have chosen all of the parameters. I chose this time around to be born a white skinned blonde haired girl in New Jersey. I was born into a Presbyterian family, lower middle class, never had more than two nickels to rub together. And uh, it's the first time ever that I've been this combination of things. In previous lifetimes, I've always been black, mostly women, and sometimes I've been a European man, but I have never once been a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white-skinned girl from New Jersey. So why did I choose to be this now? Maybe because these attributes make me more socially acceptable? Maybe you'll hear me? I don't know. Let's see what happens to this video, right? This is a test. The bottom line really is our true nature is consciousness. This is all pretend. This is all figment of our imagination. It is not our reality. Not at all. This is something that we concocted. This is something we wrote into our blueprint. We decided that we wanted to have an experience as this, this time around. We are all one means that we are all part of the universal consciousness, the universal source, or as Freud used to say, the collective unconscious. There is only one intelligence in the universe and that is it. So imagine that each one of us is a fragment of this universal consciousness, this one intelligence that set out to learn by having experiences on this planet. We are all part of this one universal whole. You with me? So we fragmented into these trillions of individuals so that we could learn how ultimately to be compassionate. When we have experiences as different portions, different parts of humanity, we learn how to love. We learn what it's like to be poor. And we save that within us on some level. When we come back and we have means, we can be compassionate and share our means with those who are less fortunate than us. Every lifetime has a lesson. We also choose the trials that we'll go through. We choose these different trials to help us reach our ultimate spiritual goals of compassion and of knowledge and of wisdom. We may choose to have relationship issues. We may choose to cope with an illness or maybe even the illness of someone in our family. We have to be able to see the situation from many sides for the growth 
of our spirit and ultimately for the growth of the universal consciousness as a whole. All of our experiences combine so that the universe can continue to expand. For instance, when a spirit decides which family to be born into, it will hover around the mother for as long as it takes for those cells to come together to form the person that this spirit will eventually become. So, if there's a miscarriage or if there is an abortion, it doesn't really matter because this spirit will continue to hang around until the conditions are right. And in the case of adoption, the same thing. This spirit, this little soul chose what circumstances were going to be used to bring this being into the family that it chose to be in. So let's say, for instance, that there's a being who is hanging around a mother who doesn't have the physical ability to have her own child. Well, this little being will find a way. Life will find a way. Life always finds a way. And I know this because I have personally regressed countless clients. And many of them were adopted. Lots of times people who are adopted are very uneasy in their own skin. And it's because they believe in worldly things. They think that their lineage is important. They think that their biology matters somehow when really it doesn't. Your ancestors, they don't mean anything to who you are right now. The only thing that matters right now is the experience that you're having right now. The relationships that you're in, your relationships with your parents, with your siblings, with your spouse, with your children. That is really all that matters right now. And how compassionate you are able to be with all of these people. And why do we know this? Because when things are not right within a relationship, what happens? We get sick. We, we feel ill at ease. There's a, an underlying current of dis-ease. So we know that when we're coming from a place of love, when we're operating from a place of compassion, that all is right with the world. That is the ultimate goal of this life. It's the ultimate goal of your past lives. It is the ultimate goal of your future lives. Adopted children also choose their families. They decide the circumstances of their birth, knowing full well which family they will be raised in. They pick all the details long beforehand. When they sit down at that great cosmic kitchen table and create their blueprints with all of their guides and the ascended masters, we choose the circumstances of our lifetime. One time when I put together my Becoming Your Own Shaman course, everyone in the class except for one person was adopted. Every one of these grown-ups who were in their 40s and older, every one of them had been adopted as a baby. Now I took this as a sign that this was a topic that needed some exploration. So that's what we did. We looked at it from the most loving perspective. And we learned, first of all, that since we chose the circumstances of our birth, we understood full well the challenges that we were going to be encountering. And looking at it from this new higher perspective really takes a lot of the, the weight off of a person's shoulders. When you realize that this adoption process did not happen to you, but that you chose to have it for the greater good of your own spiritual growth, of course that changes everything. Do you understand? The thing is, this world that we inhabit isn't really real. All of this is a figment of our imaginations. It's all a hologram. 
we're all off on some great academic exploration. We're having a field trip from home, from the other side, from the real world. This is just a little science project that we're all on. And we're all in it together, trying to learn from each other. We're like some giant cosmic debate team. We're all trying to be the winners so that we get the prize, but really the prize is wisdom. And sometimes the one who wins the debate is the one who shuts up first and <laughs> just stops arguing, stop participating in the fight. So what's the purpose and meaning of it all? I can tell you this because I've spent time at the deathbeds of many, many departing souls, both as a caregiver and as a minister who delivered the last rites. That in the end, all that truly matters is love. When a person prepares to leave this hologram, this simulation of reality, what they do is they'll speak to those who are on the other side waiting for them. They'll almost have a temporary rebound of health and energy and they'll become brighter and more animated and they'll begin to reach for someone who no one else can see but they are fully aware of. They'll begin to smile and they'll begin to hold conversations and they will be beaming with joy. But here's what they're not doing. They're not picking fights with anyone. They are not watching the news. They are not interested in anything to having to do with old grievances. <laughs> Everything is water under the bridge to them. They're moving on and all they want is peace. All they want is harmony. They want the people that matter to them to be around them when they make this transition. That's all that matters. So I ask you, now that you know all of this, how will it change the way that you interact with others? Because ultimately what you decide will change the world. It'll change your little part of it. Will you make your little piece of the world a better place? I hope so.